Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Rebel from the Mountain. On this channel I will be making documentaries about movies, about books and about music. And this first documentary, will, which will be divided into multiple episodes, will be about Steve Harley. At the time of recording it's been three or four weeks since Steve Harley sadly passed away. And he was like the artist that was the most present in my life, throughout my life. I'm 23 years old now. I was too young to see his live moments at his prime but I saw him live a few times and he had such a big impact on me and he, had, he was such a big influence on the person who I am nowadays that I'd like to dedicate this first documentary to him. So I will be digging into his lyrics, into his life, into his music, so into his albums I would say and share it with you and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Where do we have to start? That's kind of a big question in this regard, but maybe it's not a difficult question as well, because I think it's a good idea to start with Sebastian. It's a song on his, on his first album, which is called The Human Menagerie, which you see here. And the song Sebastian was also Steve Harley's first single. It kind of flopped in the UK, but it became a hit in the Netherlands, where I live, and in Belgium. And I think it's a very good starting point for this documentary. And obviously it's a good idea to start with his first single. If we walk through his whole career, then why wouldn't we start with his first single? But there's another reason to start with Sebastian, not only because I'm making the documentary and it's my favorite song by Steve Harley, but because it's also, maybe I think, is the most mythical song. There have been so many suggestions about what it's, yeah, what it's about and what it means and I've been thinking for years myself, like what was his message in this song and how did he write it and how did he come up with these lyrics? And it's a very difficult question, but I did some research and you never, we will never have the final answer, I assume. But I think we can come quite far and I think it's a good way to open this documentary by analyzing Sebastian. It's a fan favorite song, it's a, it's a love song. So let's start with that. When Sebastian Starts is the fifth song on this album, The Human Menagerie. It has 10 songs on it. And Sebastian is the fifth song, it's the end of uh, the A side. And when the starts, you immediately, it is catchy, you know, it's interesting, it, it builds up, it's a seven minute epic. It builds up to a certain climax and in between the lyrics are so compelling, they are interesting, it, it makes you want to know, you want to know more about it, let's say it in that way. And let's take a further look at those lyrics and really dive into it. So here we are with the album, The Human Menagerie, as I told you. Look, I got this as a present once, someone wrote on it, 1976. The album is from 1973, as I just told. And here's the track list. It's a great album anyway, and we'll talk about that much more, much more, but Let's just start specifically with Sebastian. We here have the inside, the great pictures of the original Cockney Rebel members. And then here we have the lyrics of Sebastian. And although we will be talking about his youth, what he went through in his youth, because Steve Harley had quite a hectic youth, I would say, before we dig into that personal thing, we should mention a few aspects of it before going into Sebastian because that youth of Steve Harley could have an in, been an influence on this song. So let's say that between uh, the age of zero when he was born and the age of 16, Steve Harley spent four years of it in hospital because of polio. So four years, that's a quarter of his life between the ages of 0 and 16 and it's good to know that because the doctor said he was not gonna make it or his life would be very difficult and in the end he made it he even became a rock star a pop star so he did quite well in that respect but in his youth the, the prospects weren't that good and the foresights weren't so good and what's also good to know is that Steve Harley next to being said we were high on drugs while writing it it means what you want it to mean, is something Steve Harley said very often. Like when someone asked him, what's Sebastian about? 
next to the fact that he said it was on LSD and on acid, he said, it means what you want it to mean. I'm not sure for myself. It's a gothic love song. And I think that specific aspect, what he frequently said, he said, it's a gothic love song. It's a gothic love poem turned into music. And I think that gothic aspect and gothic being dark and mysterious and maybe a little bit cruel. I think that aspect is what it's about in Sebastian. I can't say for sure, but I will explain why I think the gothic love aspect is so true. I've by myself been thinking about the lyrics of Sebastian for years. I'm a fan of Steve Harvey's work for almost 10 years now, around 10 years. And I've constantly been thinking like what's Sebastian about and I've made notes and I think it's good to know that Steve Harley was a fan of literature from when he was a young guy he already read a lot of books from Eliot to Steinbeck and Lawrence like big writers big poets the serious guys and I made some notes and I think Sebastian could possibly hint like uh, being written about Oscar Wilde and you probably think why Oscar Wilde but I think there are some hints in Oscar Wilde's life that could be the basis of Steve Harley writing Sebastian. I can't say for sure, of course, but let's dive deeper into that because Oscar Wilde was a famous writer, of course. Everybody, know, everybody knows him, his work, and that he was quite famous, but on a certain point in his life, Oscar Wilde was sent to prison because of he was gay and his homosexual activities were the reason why he was put in jail for about two years and that two years in jail did so much to him it were so it, these years were so difficult for Oscar Wilde that he became you could say he became another person when he got out of prison and those two years in UK prison made him make the decision to flee not to flee or to just to move to France to Paris but he wasn't willing to go under the name Oscar Wilde in Paris, so he changed his name. He got an, an he wanted to be anonymous in a certain way to to have a, yeah to be another to someone else. And his name in Paris was Sebastian Melmoth. And Oscar Wilde chose the name Sebastian Melmoth because Sebastian Melmoth was the protagonist in a book written by his great uncle, and his great uncle was called Charles Maturin or Maturin. I think it's Maturin in British and he made a book called Melmoth the Wanderer and the protagonist in that book was Sebastian Melmoth. So Oscar Wilde spelled, spent two years in UK prison before being released and moving to France and it was between 1897 and 1900 when he died that he lived by the name Sebastian Melmoth in Paris and when you take that synonym for Oscar Wilde it's a synonym in a certain way. Uh, when you take that into account and you look at the lyrics of Sebastian by Cockney Rebel, a lot of it seems to make sense. So let's get on to it. When Oscar Wilde spent the last three years of his life in Paris, it wasn't a decent life. It wasn't decent at all. It was the worst life you can imagine, I would say. Oscar Wilde, Sebastian Melmoth, was going from hotel to hotel, he was alone, his loneliness was, the, lo the level of loneliness was very high. He was wandering around, going to saloons, going to bars, drinking a lot. But you could say his life was miserable. So for Oscar Wilde, it was a period of loneliness, of poorness. He didn't have barely any money. So it was the worst period of his life. His last three years, which he spent in Paris, were the worst years of his life is what is being said about Oscar Wilde in his biographies. So let's look at it. Like when the song Sebastian starts with the candle is burning so low for me, it might be a clue, although being it a vague clue to Oscar Wilde, Sebastian Mammoth, living in very bad living conditions, in housing conditions, as far as you could say it is a house which he had. And then when he continues with, I can't seem to place your name, Cherie. Of course, Cherie is a French word and Paris where Oscar Wilde was living, spending his last three years of his life. Paris is the capital of France, so 
It's an obvious French word, word chérie. And then he follows with, come to a strange place, we'll talk over all times, we never smile. And France, of course, wasn't his original country, it was the UK, but he spent the last three years after he was released from UK prison. And in the next couple of sentences, he, for example, says, work out a rhyme. And of course, Oscar Wilde was a writer, a poem, so he works out rhymes in that way. And then we also come into the next important thing that was important in Oscar Wilde's life, which was Lord Alfred Douglas. And obviously, uh, Oscar Wilde was gay and so was Lord Alfred Douglas back in the days. And they were like exploring um, the gay scene of late Victorian London in the 1890s. And one day... Um, Oscar Wilde got prosecuted. It was a whole trial and it, was, it had to do with uh, Lord Alfred Douglas's father. And it was a, a big thing back in the days and maybe now still is when people think and speak about Oscar Wilde. But eventually it got Oscar Wilde in jail. And uh, when he was released from jail, the relation with Lord Alfred Douglas wasn't as it had always been. But I think that Lord Alfred Douglas, it was such a big person it was he had such a big influence on Oscar Wilde that Steve Harley mentioned some of it in his lyrics or could have mentioned some of it in his lyrics because he Lord Alfred Douglas I have to say it was a poet as well and a writer not as big and not as good maybe as Oscar Wilde but he was a writer he was a poet and on a certain moment in Sebastian there is like and you oh so gay so oh so gay in maybe in the most literal world speaking gay which are Parisian demands Parisian demands, Paris, where was Oscar Wilde living? In Paris. So that's, it could be a clue, you know. And Steve Harley continues with your view of society screws up my mind. And it's a known fact that when Oscar Wilde was released and he was living in Paris, the relation with Lord Alfred Douglas was broken. And the older Oscar Wilde got, the more he learned about what kind of guy Lord Alfred Douglas was. And he wasn't the nice guy that he seemed to be. In fact, he was actual, uh, I would say an arrogant, but not loved Lord Alfred Douglas in a certain way. But he also hated him in a, in a specific way. And especially his points of view and the way he was looking at the world and at society. Which could explain your views of society screw up my mind like you never know. Because Lord Alfred Douglas wanted to spend a lot of money, for example, on men, gigolos, on horse and the gay underground scene. While at the same time, Oscar Wilde was more like a calm guy who wasn't willing to spend a lot of money on stuff like that when he was in a relation with Lord Douglas. And... Yeah, mangle my mind is what Steve Harley was writing. And it is being said that Oscar Wilde loved his author Douglas, but he hated him. And he was playing with his thoughts and like not knowing what to do with the relation, how to think about his ex or about his partner, or how, however you see it. And on a certain point in the song, Steve mentions the Bowery Saloon. And a Bowery Saloon... Bowery initially is a, is, a, is a neighborhood in New York City and it was one like in 1870, 1819 in that period it was one of the neighborhoods that was doing a lot have, having a lot to do with the gay scene and there were a lot of gay bars, gay events, stuff like that and it is being said that when Oscar Wilde, Sebastian Melmoth was in Paris he also went to a lot of bars, to a lot of gay bars underground gay bars, uh, hidden gay bars, and yeah, maybe it could explain the Bowery Saloon. And a little bit later in the song, Steve writes, Pale Angel Face. And when you look at, when you look at pictures of Lord Alfred Douglas, which Oscar Wilde was probably mad at, like Lord Alfred Douglas had a pale angel face. Take a picture of him, look it up on the internet, and you see it, indeed a pale face, but he was being described also by Oscar Wilde as being an angel, as having the face of an angel. And then a little bit later, it's being no courtesan could begin to decipher your beam of light. 
And again, he uses a French word, courtesan. It's initially a French word for being a man whore, something like that. And now, in, in the end, in the end of the song, Steve Harley says, "Now we all know you." Yeah, it's the last line of Sebastian, and I think that could refer to a specific, specific letter Oscar Wilde wrote while he was in Paris. It wasn't published, it was censured, and after his death, I think it was 1905, it was being released, it was published, and the, the letter was called, it was a long letter, it was called In Profundis, and in that letter he was like firing Lord Alfred Douglas and his behavior. So when you combine the life of Oscar Wilde in the beginning, his, his time in jail, and then his release and his life in France, which he was doing under the name of Sebastian Malmoth. And you look at the letter that he wrote, this specific firing angry letter that which he gave a lot of emotional power in, which is called In Profundis, and you can find it or you can buy it somewhere. And when you look at that, you could see Sebastian as some kind of song that is being written from the perspective of Oscar Wilde thinking and writing to or about Lord Alfred Douglas and in general it is it could be seen as a song about Oscar Wilde in Paris and in the long letter called In Profundis Oscar Wilde was really angry because he he describes Lord Alfred Douglas as someone being inferior on the intellectual skill and as someone who is arrogant so he was really angry and it was really emotional the letter and there are a lot of other clues that could be linked to Sebastian and the song by Steve Harley and there are some other points I want to discuss.